while we're in the holy place tonight, and yet sometimes in the holy place it doesn't feel comfortable. Sometimes we, we think we just should slide through and, you know, hallelujah. Let me share something with you about the holy place. <laughs> the holy place is where exposure is. The holy place is a place where sonship is. Chastening. Mm. The holy place is a place of grace and divine character. It's a place of blessing and it's a place of mentoring. Now I'm going to go over this again. The holy place. It's known as the inner court of the tabernacle. The holy place. Again, Jesus said in John 14, 6, I believe. He said, I am the way, truth, and life. And no one comes to the Father except for through me. We know that's the three chambers of the tabernacle, which we've been talking about. And again, one of the things that I want to reiterate is that God in this new season is trying to bring us to a place where we recognize who we are in Christ. Where we realize that he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world and that we are the temple of the Most High God. Walking with a new dominion of power. A new dominion of thirst and hunger. And a new dominion of prosperity. And I'm not just talking about physical prosperity because what God wants us to do is be rich in the Spirit. There isn't anything greater than to be rich in the Spirit. Amen? Is everybody okay? Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I'll make sure you're still here. Now, we talked about the outer court representing the way, right? The holy place representing the truth and the most holy place representing the life. In the arena of the outer court, we talked about that as being the cross, where the sacrifice was. And in fact, the feast of Passover was fulfilled by Jesus. The holy place is a representation of truth. The Bible says that truth sets you free. You are not free in the outer court. Hello? You become free as you enter the holy place. That's where God begins to deal with you. Does everybody understand that? The diapers come off. Hello? It's time to learn how to walk. It's a preparation in the holy place, just like Esther was prepared to see her king. She went through cleansing and perfumes and all kinds of things, rituals for almost seven months. In the holy place, God begins to deal with you as his child. No longer as his baby. Doesn't mean you're not spoiled. Hallelujah. Doesn't mean you're not spoiled. We're spoiled. Because we're rich in the spirit. That's right. We're blessed. Hallelujah. In the physical arena, the holy place is a representation of your soul. Because the outer court is a representation of your body or your flesh. The holy place is a place where your soul is. And the most holy place is a representation of your spirit. So for God to begin to get, fulfill his word in you, he uses his word to deal with you. Is everybody with me? Now, he's trying to fulfill that place which he says. The devil is a thief, right? He's come to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came to bring you life and life more abundantly. There isn't anything greater than to have a life abundant. But it doesn't begin until you allow God to deal with you. Remember, what we want to be rich in is in the things of the Spirit. 
See, because the Bible says, "Thou shall, the Lord is your shepherd, you shall what? Not lack or not want. See, when you really know him as shepherd, when you really know him and you have him and you've surrendered to him totally and you know that you're his, you have everything. Because if you have him, you have everything. There's an area in the spirit where God wants you to really know, taste, and see who he really is. That was what he was trying to express to his disciples when he left prior to it. When he said to them, he said, who do they say that I am? Then he brought it individually. Who do you say that I am? See, in this holy place, a relationship is beginning to build and build and build. Why? Because the next place is the most holy place. So you're getting closer to that place of the most holy where the glory is. Amen? Where life, life, giving life is. Now, what happens in the holy place as the soul, a representation of your soul? You have three parts to your soul. You have your mind, your will, and your emotions. Now, of course, we know to, that these are associated with thoughts. All right? Your mind and thoughts. Your will is a representation of choices. And your emotions are a representation of emotions and even imaginations and your thoughts and stuff like that, things that you see. So what God is trying to do is bring us to that place and the holy place is to change us over to expose the old, to remove it, so that his character can be formed in us. So one of the things he's going to begin to do is deal with you and your mind, your will, and your emotions. Why? So you don't make so many goofy choices. Hello? So you have dominion. In the holy place is the beginning and, can, and maintenance of warfare. This is where you are taught this is where you are tried and this is where you are perfected. Why? You're getting ready to see your king. Hello, is everybody with me? He's trying to bring us to a place in the holy place to where you are like-minded with him. Where the mind, the heart, and the will and the desires of Christ are manifested more and more. Oh, hallelujah. Turn to Third John with me. Is everybody with me? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Third John. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Whew. Thank you. In verse 2, it's just for you. Would you read it with me? Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health. Ooh, there's healing. Hello? Just as you're what? So without your soul prospering. This is where the Lord says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Hello? Knowledge is the key. That's one of the keys of God. He said, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health. You know, that's God's perfect will for you to be healed. Hello? It's His will. Of course, it's His will for us not to get sick. But when we get sick, it's His will for us to be healed. It says in verse 3, For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you just as you walk in the truth. So listen, if you are not in the truth, walking in the truth, and know the truth, then you're not prospering. And your soul needs to be renewed. 
renewed. How's it being renewed? It's being renewed through the Word and the regeneration of the Holy Spirit. Is everybody with me? Your soul is being renewed through the Word and the regeneration of the Holy Spirit. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Oh, hallelujah. And why should we walk in truth? Well, I'll turn to John 8. <laughs> hallelujah. Oh, it's good to hear the per pages turning on a Wednesday night. There's one for you. <laughs> Glory to God. Uh oh. Hmm. <laughs> I just felt a wave come through here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Where did I say to go? John 8. Thank you. Oh, the glory. In verse 31, would you read it with me? Oh. Let's start at 28. Then Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He. And that I do nothing of myself. But as my father taught me, I speak these things. Here we are in the holy place. Why? What is being separated? What's being exposed? Self. Why? Because God is trying to bring you into the most holy place where it's spirit to spirit, no longer self. In that place, he speaks to his children, not to self. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. And he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do the things that please him. As he spoke these words, many believed in him. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Set you free. Oh, hallelujah. The holy place is a place where you and I become to get set free. So everybody got it? Oh, hallelujah. In this arena, and I want to explain something. Uh, cause I, I'm not really here to discuss and teach about the anointing, but I want you to know that there's a place where the anointing is released. And preparation. When you come from the outer court to the holy place, God separates you and fills you with Him. Once you get close to that door, the most holy place, the anointing is released, you're in. And yourself is out. And there is a place where there's a oneness with Him. A stirring in your spirit where you know, where you don't pray about things because you're so oneness with him that you know that you know. Now then you can say, just what Jesus said, I don't do anything unless I see my father do it first. God is trying to bring us to that place where we're able to see in that arena of the spirit, where the riches of the spirit of God are overwhelming. Once you taste that place, you will never be satisfied with anything ever again. Ever. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> so we know that the soul must prosper. Amen? It must prosper. Now remember, truth is light. Light exposes darkness. Right? Praise God. Go to Matthew 21. Um, <laughs> hallelujah okay Matthew 21 
glory. In verse 12. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> In verse 12, would you read it with me? Then Jesus went into the where? Oh, he went into where? Hmm, the temple of God and drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Now, what, where is he talking about? Your soul. This is where Jesus begins to kick over tables in your life. He begins to expose things in your soulish arena. He begins to deal with you to stop walking according to how you feel and walking by faith. He begins to bring you to the edge of the ledge. Eventually he'll kick you off so that you trust him. You will be tried and tested. Until it is accomplished. In the holy place where we enter. Trying and testing must be accomplished. Because his purpose is to take you over. Does everybody understand that? He's trying to take you over now. Why? Because he bought you. You're not yours. This is where his word is beginning to be fulfilled. Where he says he paid a price for you. When you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, now he's collecting. You gave your life to him. He says, good. Now I'm collecting. I'm collecting your life. This is the place where all the things that you have leaned on, trusted, relied on, self-supportive, will be shaken. This is the area where everything that you have held on to your talents and everything else is going to be shaken so that he can have his rightful place. See, he wants to be on the throne of your heart to where the scripture is fulfilled. It's no longer we that live, but him that lives. Oh, hallelujah. Now, go to John 16. So, you know, Jesus comes in there and starts doing Holy Ghost karate. Starts kicking over tables. Yeah! You know, smashing them in half. Man, he's got some dynamite moves. Hallelujah. So fast you can't even see him. Glory to God. Ever feel a fight within yourself? Well, who do you think's there? <laughs> Sometimes you can feel those tables turning over. Oh, you know. Conviction. Hello. And John 16 and verse 13. Read it with me. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. I want to show you something very important. So you've come from the outer court. Everything that was just peachy. Now you've come entering the holy place and the Holy Spirit of truth comes to you and meets you at the door and says, come on, I'm the spirit of truth. Come on. And you're like, wait a minute. All of a sudden the diaper falls off. <laughs> I'm naked. 
Yes, you are. I have some new garments for you. Come on into the holy place. And he brings you into the holy place. And strange things begin to happen to you. You try to figure it out. And it just doesn't make sense. Why was everything so wonderful? Now everything is turned upside down. Why do I feel this way? Why do I think this way? Man, I thought it was better in the outer court. This is where you are tried. You are tested. Why? Because the outer court is the closest thing to Egypt. Hello? The outer court is the closest thing to Egypt. Wait a minute. What about all the things I used to be able to... Wait, I thought coming to Jesus was free. I thought there was freedom in Christ. See, now you're beginning to find out how bound you were. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, that's when Jesus introduces you to the Holy Spirit. And he says, come on. No more skipping through the tulips. No more spending exactly the way you used to. No more getting the things you wanted. No more of you. But we fight and we kick and we scream and we try to run to that door to the outer courts. No, let me out. <laughs> and we call on the name of Jesus. Jesus, help. And it gets a little warm in there. And the Spirit says, Welcome to the holy place. Turn to Jeremiah 18. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. This isn't religious. This is truth. And you must remember that you are the temple of God. You gave your life to the king. Now he's going to teach you how to become royal. Amen? You know, do you ever see, you know, how... Uh, some of the royal families, they teach etiquette. Amen? There's an etiquette of being royal. There's ethics. There's, you know, and there's the same thing in, in the spirit. You know, you, you, you know, do you ever see people, uh, you know, they, they learn how to walk straight as royal people. You know, they put the book on the head and they try to balance it. You know, so they can pretend that they're royal, even though some of the people are royal, but that's carnal royal. Carnal royalty don't mean poop. <laughs> You're eternally royal. There's a difference. Oh, hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit comes and brings you and introduces you, meets you right at the door of the holy place and says, come on in. I'm your comforter, I'm your mentor, I'm your teacher, and I'm your Lord. And I will bring you to the throne room of your Father. I will be with you and never forsake you. When you sleep, I will be there. When you awake, I will be there. I want you to know me, because as you know me, you will know your Lord. Amen. Because I am the Spirit of the Lord. 
See, people don't realize truly the Holy Spirit. He is the one. The Holy Spirit is the one who expresses the Father. He is the one who manifested Jesus. Remember, who impregnated Mary. It wasn't the neighbor. Amen? He was the Holy Spirit. So Jesus was actually the son of the Holy Spirit, wasn't he? Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. So the Holy Spirit comes and he takes us in and the word is fulfilled according to Jeremiah. He says, listen, you who have given me your life. Verse 2, arise and go down to the potter's house. And there I will cause you to, what? Did I tell you where to go? Well, you ought to know. Come on, you hear what the Holy Ghost told you? Jeremiah. Jeremiah 18, verse 1 and 2. Hallelujah. And this Jeremiah was not a bullfrog. He was a prophet. Jeremiah 18, and verse 2. Arise and go down to the potter's house and there I will what? Cause. Everyone say cause. Cause, cause me. He's going to cause me. Oh, in other words, he's going to set you up. Hallelujah. I'm going to cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house and there he was making something at the wheel. The wheel represents the Holy Spirit. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in, in the hand of the potter, so he made it again into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make. These are tests and things you are tried for. When it begins to impart a truth to you and you begin to lay it aside and so forth and not use the truth, guess what happens? You get slammed again and put on the potter's wheel. Is everybody with me? Crunch. And we have a tendency to run off that wheel. Ah, Jesus, help me. And we cry all day long. Oh Lord, I'm willing to do your will. Good, get back on that wheel. Yeah, but. Oh, hallelujah. And then the word of the Lord came to me saying, Oh, children of the Most High God, can I not do with you as this potter? Says the Lord, look as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. Mm. So many times we lose sight that God is molding us. Amen? He is. Listen, He's not done until you've boogied from this place. And I don't mean this building. I mean from this earth. He will melt you, mold you, slam you, put you on that potter's wheel until you're in His image and likeness. Amen? Welcome to the holy place. Oh, to God be the glory. Go to Ezekiel 36. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Ezekiel 36 and verse 23. Is everybody there? You want the page number? I don't have it. <laughs> Would you read it with me? And he says something very powerful. He says, I will sanctify my what? My great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. 
And a nation shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when I am hallowed in you before their eyes. When he is what? Hallowed in you. Amen. Why? Because you're to be the sign and wonder. Are you all chilly? Okay, can you adjust that? Thank you. Then hug one another, warm up until it gets nice in here. Verse 24. And I'll take you from among the nations, gather you out of all the countries, and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean, and I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. And I will what? Give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you in what? Cause you. You to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments to do them. Then you shall dwell in the land that I've given to your fathers and you shall be my people and I will be your God. I will deliver you from all of your uncleanliness. I will call for the grain and multiply it and bring no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of your trees and increase of your fields so that you need never again bear the reproach of famine among the nations. The famine that he's talking about is spiritual famine. Hello. So that you may be rich in all the things of Christ. So he's going to cause you to walk in the statutes. He's going to cause you to get on that potter's wheel. He's going to cause you, I'm telling you, welcome to the holy place. This is where God begins to truly deal with you. Amen? Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Now, go to Psalm 15 because this is wonderful again. I know we read this last night, but I got to do it again. Praise you. Now remember, you're being prepared also to meet the king. Lord who may abide in your tabernacle. And who may dwell in your holy hill. What does it say? He who walks uprightly and works righteousness. And speaks the truth in his heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue. Nor does evil in his neighbor, to his neighbor. Nor does he take up a reproach against his friend. In whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and does not change. Mm. He who does not put out his money for usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. That's what God is trying to do with you in the holy, in the holy place. All of this is a representation of soul. Does everybody got it? Everything he's trying to do here. What's he trying to do? Impart the spirit of truth into every area of your life. Oh, hallelujah. A renewed soul will not be moved. Won't be moved. You won't be moved on the things you hear. You won't be moved on the things you feel. You won't be moved on the things you see. You won't be moved. Why? Because you'll stand strong. You won't be moved by temptation. Now what's happening in this arena is God's power is manifesting in you. If I was to pour water into a cup that had a covering, it wouldn't get in. In fact, that covering in that cup is making it dark, isn't it? Until that lid is open, light shines, I'm able to fill it. It's the same thing with me and you in all the areas of our life. Until that lid is taken off and light shines and God can fill it. Until then, it can't be filled. It doesn't matter how much you do. And to you allow God to deal with you in that place. Once that lid is taken off, now what happens is he fills you in that area with his spirit that allows you to have power and dominion. Is everybody with me? And that's what he's bringing us into this new season is to what? Walk in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The greatest power that you can have is over self. 
That's what he's bringing us to. Over self. Oh, hallelujah. Go to Exodus 25. Now, in the holy place, there are three main tables. Glory. And Exodus 25. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, the glory. Whew. Thank you. Exodus 25. Is everybody there? And verse 23. And it says, And you shall make a table of acacia wood. Two cubits shall be its length. A cubit its width, and a cubit and a half its height. And you shall overlay it with pure gold, make a molding of gold all around, and you shall make for it a frame of a hand breadth all around, and you shall make a gold molding for the frame all around, and you shall make it for it four rings of gold, put rings on the four corners that are in the four legs. The rings shall be close to the frame as, a, as holders for the poles to bear the table. And you shall make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold that the table may be carried with them. You shall make its dishes, its pans, its pictures, and its bowls for pouring. You shall make them of pure gold. And you shall set the showbread on the table before me always. The showbread that is in the holy place. There's 12 Loaves of bread representing the 12 tribes of Israel. The bread is present there in representation of God's provisions. Because when they were in the wilderness, God sent them manna every single day. Does everybody understand that? It's also a representation of God's presence. What did Jesus say? He said, I am the what? I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Now the bread also represents something very powerful. The word. It also represents the word. Okay? Oh, hallelujah. Now, there's another table that's in the holy place. Remember Jesus said, I am the true bread of life that came down from heaven. What? The word became what? Flesh. So it also re represents the Word. So that's what God is going to deal with you. How does He do it? Through His Word. And the regeneration of His Holy Spirit. Okay, the next one is in uh, Exodus 37. Oh, hallelujah. Three tables in the holy place. What three parts of the soul do we have? The mind the will, and the emotions. Hmm. In fact, the Bible says the word is like a two-edged sword and pierces what? The soul, the spirit, and the body. It talks about the bones and the marrow. Amen? So the word is going to pierce all areas. Oh, hallelujah. And uh, Exodus 37 and verse 17 He also shall make the lampstand of pure gold, of hammered wood work. He made the lampstand, its shaft, its branches, its bowls, its ornament, knobs, its flowers were the same piece. And six branches come out of its sides, three branches on either side. Verse 19, and there shall be three bowls made like almond blossoms on one branch with an ornament, knob, and a flower, and three bowls made of like almond blossoms on the other branch, and so forth, and six, uh, anyways, go to verse, uh, keep going, and on verse 20, and on the lampstand itself, were four bowls made like almond blossoms, each with its ornamental knob and flower, there was a knob under the first two branches of the same, and a knob under the second two branches of the same, and the knob under the third two branches of the same, according to the six branches extending from it. Their knobs and their branches were of one piece, 
all of it was one hammered piece of pure gold. And it made its, what? Seven lamps, its wick trimmers, and its trays of pure gold. So we see here now that in the holy place, there is a lampstand with seven lamps. In this arena, it, it represents the sevenfold of the Holy Spirit. Now, would you turn to me in Isaiah 11? And the number seven means what? Complete and perfect. Isaiah 11. This is where the mentor, the teacher, the comforter, the friend, the Lord, begins to melt us and mold us, causes us. Amen? He causes us. And what is he doing? He's imparting in us the arena of the Spirit and the riches of the Spirit. And that must be done by these seven spirits. Now look it. It says, The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Or say, upon me. Now who is the Spirit of the Lord? The Holy Spirit. What's he imparting in you? The Spirit of what? Wisdom and understanding. What else? The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and fear or reverence of the Lord. Those are the sevenfold of the Holy Spirit. These are. This is where God's character begins to be expressed in you. Why? Now, now if you think about in the Old Testament, you remember when the spirit of the Lord came upon Samson. What, what, what was the spirit? I mean, the spirit of strength came upon Samson. The spirit of the Lord came upon David. Amen? Think about where the, the spirits of the Lord came upon these men individually, but now you have it all. Now you have it all. Amen? You've got the spirit of knowledge. You got, and, and, and the one thing he prepares you before hitting the holy of holies is the spirit of fear, which means reverence. Reverence. You know, so many people want to play religion, but they don't have reverence to God. They want, to, they want God to do all kinds of things in their life, but they, yet they don't even know how to worship Him. They have no reverence. They want freedom, and they want all these things from God, but they have not learned how to reverence Him yet. That must be learned. Amen? So understand what's happening right now. Now, God is big, He's got you on the potter's wheel in the holy place. You're still screaming and kicking like you've been put in the fire. Amen? Remember, what was it? Med Shack, Abednego, and... Re who? Red Shack, whatever. Blue Shack. Three brothers in Christ. Three powerful men. Red, Red Shack, Abednego, and... Red Shack and Benny. Got it. And remember, who showed up in, in there? Tell me those guys weren't in the holy place? Woo! And who was in there? Jesus. So, come on, think about it. You know, the Bible doesn't tell us they were screaming to come out. You don't know that, though. Man, they probably all looked at each other. We're going to die! But we're going to trust in the Lord. We're not going to go by our feelings. Are you hot yet? Whew. Are we dead yet? Wow, where'd that breeze come from? Whew. Let me out. <laughs> so what's happening is God is beginning to Take off the lid. Bring light and fill that area with his spirit. With what? The wisdom. The knowledge. The understanding. All the things so that his character can be formed in you. Listen, you try to communicate with someone. You try to communicate with a little child. Well, 
like a math quiz or something, you know. You want to try and tell this child the, how to start a car and the operation of a motor or something, you know. They can't. They don't have the wisdom. They don't have the knowledge. They don't have the understanding, do they? They must reach a level. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He brings you to a level where the mind of Christ is able to operate in you so that you can understand God Almighty. Does everybody understand that? It doesn't mean, and listen, to understand God Almighty means that you must understand you don't need to understand anything sometimes. Why? Because too many people rely on their own understanding instead of the understanding of things of the Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Now go to verse 25. Oh, and uh, Ezekiel 37. Hallelujah. Ezekiel, or Ezekiel, yeah. No, Exodus 37, sorry. We'll get there. I told you I couldn't read my writing. Exodus 37. Hallelujah. Is everybody all right? Glory. Oh, the glory. Exodus 37 and verse 25. Are you getting this? Is everybody there? Would you read it with me? And he made the what? Incense altar of acacia wood, its length was a and its width a cubit. It was square and two cubits was its height. Its horns were one piece with it and he overlaid it with a bunch of pure gold. Now, it says it was the table or the incense altar. This is where we talk about the sweet aroma. The Bible tells us that we become a sweet aroma to the Lord. You know why? Because your flesh is cooking. Hello? Your flesh is cooking. Praise God. Why? Because you're dying. And He's living in you. The Bible also tells us in, um, in Revelation uh, chapter 5, if you go there for a minute. The incense. Revelation 5. Hallelujah. Revelation 5 and verse 8. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp. And the bowls were full of what? Incense, which are the what? Prayers of the saints. This is the place where you learn intercession. I'm telling you, it is. Jesus said something very profound. He said, yo, you who are heavy burden, yoked with the things of the world, come on, come to me. Learn from me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He said, what? Learn from me. That's what the holy place is. It's a place of learning. That's what it is. It's a place where you are taught. It's a place where you are tried. It's a place where you are exposed. What's God doing? Well, He's imparting you the sevenfold of His Spirit. He's teaching you the reverence of Him. You know what? Sometimes you have to go through trials to understand the reverence of the Lord. Amen? He's imparting you a desire for intercession to pray for the lost. He's given you a desire. Why? What's His desire? That no man be lost. You're becoming not only like-minded but heart-minded. This is the place of the holy place. Oh, hallelujah. 
In Romans 8, 26, the Bible says, and, and in our weaknesses, we do not know what we should pray. Amen? But the Spirit prays through us. What's He doing? Making intercession for the saints. Making intercessions. That's why you pray in tongues. Making intercession for the saints. Did you ever get a burden? All of a sudden you start praying in tongues, man, and you just can't stop. That's not you praying anymore. That's your spirit. That's making intercession. And you don't even know what you're praying for, but you know it's good. I don't know what I'm praying for, but praise God, something's get it. Somebody's getting healed, rescued, delivered, or getting slammed on the potter's wheel. Somebody just got lassoed. Yoo Come back here, son. Oh, hallelujah. Go to Second Peter chapter one. Praise God. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Verse 2. Would you read it with me? Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly and great precious promises that through these you may be what partakers of the what divine nature oh welcome to the holy place where your nature no longer has dominion or is even allowed but we become partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through what through lusts oh that divine nature is the divine character. Amen? This is the holy place. Go to Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. Glory. Everybody there? Hebrews 12 and verse 3. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted the bloodshed striving against sin. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to what? Sons. In the holy place, sonship is manifested. You are no longer just a baby child. And this is where you are fed meat in a bottle. And then you learn to get your own meals. But this is where sonship is manifested. Child. This is where you realize that he is your parent. It's an arena where the relationship becomes more than just God. He becomes Father. Is everybody with me? See, outer courts is more of kind of like God. Holy place is Father. He said, my son, do not despise what? chastening mm, of the Lord. Nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. Ah. Get on their wheel. For whom the Lord loves, he what? Chastens. And scourges every son whom he receives. Ooh. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons and daughters. I'm going to put daughters in there too, so you girls are not out of this. For what child is there whom a father does not chasten? 
But if you are without chasing, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not one of his children. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and lives? For they indeed for a few days chasten us as it seemed best to them, but he for our profit that we may be partakers of his what? Holiness. Man, do you see the change in the holy place? Every believer goes through it. Many run from it. They'd rather stay in the outer courts and deal and stay in the holy place. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present. But painful. Nevertheless, afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Do you understand? Everyone must be chastened. You are trained by chastening. That's how you learn. That's how children learn. They are taught by their mistakes, aren't they? When, they're, when they make mistakes, they get what? Chastened. Amen? So your chastening is also correcting. It doesn't mean you're beat. Hello? Chastening is correcting. So we see here that in the holy place, sonship, daughtership, and chastening are manifested. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Look at, <clears throat> go to Psalm 111. Psalm 111. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, the glory. And verse 10. It says that the fear of the Lord is the what? The beginning of wisdom. That's reverence. And a good understanding of all those who do his commandments. His praise endures forever. So, you know, in this area of chastening, what God is trying to do is grant us more wisdom. More wisdom. He tells us, man, if you lack wisdom, ask for it. If you're not going to ask for it, I'll help you. And if you don't realize you need more wisdom, I'll cause you to know you need more wisdom. <laughs> if you think you need to be more humble... And you haven't asked for it. I'll cause you to ask to be humble. Welcome to the holy place. Where he causes you. If you're not willing to recognize it yourself. And ask for it. Hello. <laughs> oh praise God. Go to Revelation 3. Oh hallelujah. Revelation chapter 3. This is where we are refined in fire. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Revelation 3 and verse 18 and 19. He says something very powerful. He says, listen, I counsel you to buy for me gold refined in the fire that you may be what? Rich. Rich in what? And the things of God. That you may be rich in white garments. That you may be clothed. That the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. Remember your diaper fell off. And anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love I rebuke and chase. And therefore be zealous and what? Repent. Oh, hallelujah. So he counsels us. He said, go there. Buy this. In other words, there is a price to pay, isn't there? He says, you buy this. How do you buy it? By surrendering and yielding. Not resisting. Not running out from it. Not trying to unlock the door that you've just been locked in. Not screaming, get me out of here. But get back on the potter's wheel. 
and let him melt you. Let him mold you. Nothing worse than having surgery while you're awake. Alleluia. Let him chasten you. Let him expose you. The Bible says in Psalm 119, 1 through 8, and I'm not going to go through it, it says, Blessed are the undefiled. Blessed are the undefiled. But I do want to go to Revelation, I mean, um, Psalm 119 and verse 64. The Lord kept bringing me back to this verse. He kept going, go to 119.64. I, I would read it, and he'd say, and I would stop. And he'd say, read the rest. Follow it through. And I said, okay. Then I understood what he was talking about. Psalm 119 and 64. Start there. Is everybody there? The earth, O Lord, is full of your mercy. What's he say? Teach me your statutes. You have dealt well with your servant, O Lord, according to your what? Word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge. For I believe your ca uh, commandments. Before I was afflicted, I what? Went astray. But now I keep your word. You are good and do good. What's he say? Teach me your statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is fat as grease, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. In other words, he's been chastened. That I may what? Learn your statutes. You see, he's saying, teach me. Teach me. I understand now that your chastening has, is teach me. I understand now these things. See, he wasn't running from them. He was running to them. Oh. In verse 72, the law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of coins of gold and silver. What happened? He tasted God. He tasted a place where he never wanted to leave again. He tasted a chastening that he knew was from God, a love. Let me tell you, sometimes when God chastens you, after he convicts you, and he chastens you and corrects you, he loves you to death. It's like a, forgive me, it's like a dog that wants to lick you to death, you know? You just can't get rid of him. You know? I'm telling you, sometimes God will just love on you. Did you ever see, you know, when you, your grandmother, and you go up to your grandmother, and she goes and she scrabs your cheek. Ugh, you know? Shakes your cheek. Oh, you little... Hallelujah. And they want to slob all over you and kiss you to death. Daddy loves us. And I think that's one of the hardest things that you and I in the human carnal arena have a hard time accepting is his great love for us. That's why you must always remember the things he's done because it reveals his love. Amen. Hallelujah. In this arena of the holy place, you begin to warfare. You know what you're fighting for? Him. Has everybody got it? Why? The Bible says you labor unto the Lord. Now you're fighting for Him. Now you may think, let me share something with you. You may be fighting for a soul. You're fighting for Him. You're not fighting for that soul. The only reason why you're fighting for that soul is because he's causing you to fight. Does everybody understand that? So you're actually interceding. You're fighting from him. What's all his servants say? Lord, you want me to go? 
Lord, is this what you want me to do? You know, when Saul had his encounter with, with the Lord, and he acknowledged him at Lord, one of the things he said was, what do you want me to do? Okay, you're real. I've been lied to. I've been bound by religion. The letter has been killing me. I found the Spirit. Now what do you want me to do? Amen? There's a difference. See, now we're not fighting flesh and blood. The Bible says in Ephesians 6.12 that you are not fighting flesh and blood but powers of darkness, wickedness, and heavenly places, right? Now you've got a realization because God has opened your eyes to the demonic arena too. You begin to learn now in the holy place that the things have been... A, why? Because caps are coming off. Covers are coming off. Demons are beginning to leave you. And when they try to come back, they no longer can. Only if you let them. Only if you let them. Oh, hallelujah. Go to Second Corinthians 10. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians ten and verse four. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Good, I'm not. For the weapons of our warfare are what? Not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Amen. That's when you begin to warfare. All of these things take place in the holy place. What's God doing? He's establishing His showbread. His lampstand. And His incense. Is everybody with me? That's what He's doing. He's removing your stink and putting His smell in. Amen? He's removing your words and putting His word in. He's removing your pride and putting His light in. So that you may be an expression of His character and likeness. And this is in the holy place. This is where God does seven things. Causes sonship, exposure, chastening, grace. Why? Because his plan begins to unfold. Divine character, blessing, and mentoring. Do you want me to repeat it? Sonship, exposure, chastening, grace. Divine character, blessing, and mentoring. Oh, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Blessed are the undefiled. Another place. Another area. Another position. And another truth. Lord, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed, Master. We are honored and blessed. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands to heaven and just ask Him even right now to light your fire. Burn everything out. Remove those things from us, Lord. Bind us to the potter's wheel. We repent even now, Lord. Or repent for coming off the potter's wheel.
We ask that you remove every cover and every cap that has been holding something in. We take our authority right now in the name of Jesus. And we break every label that the world has placed over us. We no longer accept them, but we reject them. We come against the spirits of fear and anger and unbelief. We forgive those who persecute us, abused us, and hurt us. Who stole from us. We forgive them. We release ourselves from the spirit of rejection and pride. Anger and fear. Anxiety. We release ourselves from every addiction. We release ourselves from control. And the desire to have control. We release ourselves from self. From all sickness and disease. We release ourselves from every ungodly soul tie. And ungodly desire. We repent for the sins of our forefathers. And we break and release ourselves right now. From every ancestral curse. Self-imposed curse. And temporary curse. We ask Lord that you'll open up every cap. And every cover in our life. You don't even have to show us. Just remove them. And fill us with your light. And your truth. That we may be a light to the world for you. That we may be filled with your spirit. That we may be like minded. Like hearted. Character. According to your will. And according to your way. In Jesus name.